I never thought I'd hear the best breakup advice of my life coming from George Lucas. And yes, I know what everybody is thinking. Is George Lucas really wearing an untucked plaid shirt while spitting bars? Yes, he is. And that is why we love him. And we also love his strong hairline. Hit the subscribe button, people. It's 60,000 before April and it's looking more and more doable every day. Roll the first clip, baby, and keep in mind on how all could it is that George Lucas is just standing there the whole time? Roll it. I've kind of lost control of Star Wars, so it's going off in a different path than what I intended. But the first six are very much mine and my philosophy. And I think that philosophy uh, sort of goes beyond um, any particular time because it's based on history, it's based on philosophy, it's based, it's based on a lot of things. And, uh, you know, the, the, the first three basically tell you how a, a democracy turns into a dictatorship and you end up with a tyrant, the emperor. Uh, it's a very important now uh, where we are now in our political history. Um, the other part was that in there, it's like, um, I purposely, all of the various colors and shapes of the aliens and everything that live in that world, um, it's a normal situation. There's no real discrimination. The only discrimination is against robots. And we haven't really uh, reached that period yet. And uh, I'm sure the robots will be able to overcome it uh, because they don't have the same feelings. Uh, so, um, but it really shows you in terms of the way the politics are and the way things are, uh, you know, how to fight those ideas. And a lot of it really has to do with, um, with uh, overcoming fear. You know, the thing that brought, and also the, the movies, you know, the, the uh, thing with Anakin is that he, he um, started out a great kid. He was very compassionate. Uh, and um, so the issue was, is how did he turn bad? How did he go to the dark side? And he went to the dark side by, uh, the, the Jedis are not supposed to have attachments. They can, have, they can love people, they can do it, but they can't attach. That's the problem when you get in the, uh, in the world of fear. Once you're attached to something, then you become afraid of losing it. And when you became afraid of losing it, then you turn to the dark side and you want to hold on to it. And that's what uh, Anakin's issue was ultimately, is he wanted to hold on to his wife, who he knew he had a premonition that she was going to die. He didn't know how to stop it. So he went to the dark side to find, in, in mythology and everything, they go to Hades and you talk to the devil and the devil says, this is what you do. And basically you sell your soul to the devil. When you do that, then you're afraid and you're on the dark side and you fall off the, the, the golden path of compassion because you are greedy. You want to hold on to something that you love and he didn't do it. And as a result, he turned bad. So the thing about that is, George, you're saying with the, the movies, there's the time it's not all the time, but yeah. the lessons are timeless, right? Yeah, they're timeless. They, they've been Disney's attempt on George Lucas has left him scarred and deformed. Because I hate to be the one to say it, but watching George Lucas give interviews in 2021 is just depressing. Especially nowadays. I mean, we could have had this absolute genius making incredible Star Wars for us, but instead we have Disney. George Lucas might have been a terrible dialogue writer, but he at least had an amazing imagination that we shouldn't look over. The prequels, as flawed as they might be, are justified in their existence. You want to know why? It's the fact that they are a piece of art made by an artist telling a story with original ideas. You compare that to the sequels, however, when the sequels are just a corporate product designed only to make money with no heart and soul. George even gave them an outline to follow for this sequel trilogy. And Lucasfilm, Bob Iger, Kathleen Kennedy and Jay they all thought they could make a better Star Wars movie than the guy who created it. That goes beyond idiocy. Now I have one more clip to show you. Roll the damn clip. Stocks are hurting us. George is very different now because he doesn't make movies on a day-to-day -day basis anymore like he used to. And I did get to see a glimpse of him when he was making movies um, in terms of what that day is like, which is pretty grueling. But now he's building a museum, so he'll tell you about that. Yeah, I'm sort of just... Uh, being a hobby arch arch uh, architect, building buildings, and at the same time uh, working on a museum, which is a museum of narrative art, which is a uh, saying that ultimately art 
in the beginning and still uh, is tells a narrative of society. That's how people come together and have a common belief system because in the beginning, and even a lot of places now, people don't know how to read or write. And so you can give speeches, but it doesn't resonate that much. But in, especially in, the, in, um, in uh, ancient times, if you go into a city, they had statues of their heroes, they had mosaics of their religion, they had um, you know, statues of the, the leader who's ever run the country. Those are all things that um, uh, told people in a very emotional way, it's done emotionally, not intellectually, that this is who we are. And um, it's kind of a controversial idea, but I got it through anthropology and I believe in it. And so I'm building a museum that really uh, is based on the aspirations of a society. And everybody says, well, you know, you got comics in there, comic art. I said, that's what people believe in in the United States. And, and uh, uh, illustration, Norman Rockwell, uh, Frida Kahlo, these are things that people believe in, uh, that that's what they, that, that's what their aspirations are. And uh, so it sort of tells you a lot about a society. And so the museum I'm building is sort of a, a way of connecting with what the society believes in. It's especially, I think, relevant today when we're breaking, we're fracturing all that up. You know, in the end, it's, you know, I believe it's all got to come together and be homogenized um, because we're the human race. We're not a bunch of separate races. We're one race. And the sooner we understand that and begin to accept the, the sort of eccentric, eccentricity, Eccentricities. Eccentricity of other um, races and other societies, the more we'll grow and become smarter people, but also the, the conflicts that we have will go away. I know we're losing, we're coming up on our time, so we want to be of that for you. Now, what George literally repeated is what Gina Carano said on Twitter that got her cancelled. Isn't that just ironic? I'm very glad, though, that George Lucas doesn't give a crap about SJW nonsense. Now, to translate what he said in a nice way in his soliloquy is that the sequel trilogy is trash. You know, just let Star Wars die. Put it out of his misery, is what he really wanted to say, and that was my terrible George Lucas voice. Suffice to say, I haven't practiced it very much. I know I sound like a raccoon. Now, it's good to know how he truly feels about Disney and their tyrannical empire. In this live stream, he actually called his own wife a Jedi. I mean, can you get any more based? But you know what? I actually have a bone to pick with you, George, because you once said that Star Wars is supposed to be a wholesome fairy tale. Hey, Georgie boy, this isn't very wholesome. Because not long ago when Gina Carano was made to go far, far away, everybody was like, the sequels might be a mess, but at least we have the Mandalorian. Well, not anymore. Those days of the Mandalorian are long gone because season three of the Mandalorian is going to be the most pirated show ever, even more so than before. And by the time that Disney is done fucking up Star Wars, George Lucas will be able to buy it back for a dollar, which might have been his plan all along. But it's clear that John John Favreau and Dave Filoni are about honoring and building on George Lucas's law and universe. While Kathy Kennedy's camp is about remaking George Lucas's universe, we live in the worst timeline for Star Wars and on that bombshell. To all the people who said Disney ruined Star Wars, you are 100% right. Pat yourself on the back. Manix fade out.